Hello people, I am Jabby Koi, joined by Char Kirk. Hi. We're going to look at the trailer for Kedarnath, starring Sushant Singh Rajput, Sarah Ali Khan, and it's directed by Abhishek Kapoor. This comes out December 7th, which is fairly soon, so mark your calendars. Here we go, let's check this out. Do that. We can do that. केदारनाथ <laughs> Wow, that was intense, man. Ooh, what a way to end it. So before we jump into our discussion, I want to quickly thank Shashank Saxena and Basudhara Ghosh for making the subtitles for us. Really appreciate that. There is obviously some cultural stuff there that is informing some of the conflict going on here. Yes. Between Hindus and Muslims? Yeah, so yeah. Um, from what I understand, um, Sushant Singh Rajput's character is a Muslim, yeah. and then Sara Ali Khan is a Hindu, and so I think there is this sort of conflict between having a relationship between a Muslim and a Hindu. Yeah. So it does have that kind of Romeo and Juliet feel about it, that forbidden love aspect. I, I love the symbolism. Yeah, because uh, you know what saved him in the end? The statue? Yeah, the, mm. the Hindu statue, right? right? No, I, that's not what I was referring to, but sh yeah, that, I mean, there's probably, it's probably layered yeah. with a litany of symbolisms throughout it that we're not catching, but what I'm hooking into is the symbolism of rage. Yeah. Because she has this affection for this person, these two perfectly opposite people where they fit you know, where mm -hmm. opposites attract and it's like, you know, a perfect unity in a way. Because she is not allowed, allowed to be with this person that she finds affection for, that she has an affinity with. That she, she loves. She, that she, yeah, she has this rage of just like, I want everything to be destroyed. But then it happens and it's like the fallout of, of that kind of reaction. Like if you just look at what would happen without the waterfall, without, without, without the, the rain, flood. without the flood. Yeah. I mean, without that, like just think about socially speaking, the, 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 what would happen with your family if you were to have an outburst like that. To me, it's symbolic of the emotional trauma 
that you go through and what you lose in that emotional trauma, right. the, uh, the fallout that usually ensues and who you end up not being able to talk to anymore because like you basically lose your family in the process of pursuing this thing that you, that you, you know, So it's like you feel. The, the world as you know it is being destroyed as this new path is laid ahead of you. Yeah, I've mentioned this before. It's a little anecdote. I'm trying to think of the best, the easiest way to communicate this because it's like when I'm talking about a person who knew a person, it, it can get really confusing really fast. Okay. So there was this Muslim girl I briefly dated uh, named Lisa, very briefly dated. And her cousin is also Muslim and her cousin's father passed away. So Lisa's father, you took it upon himself to take care of Lisa's cousin, mm -hmm. right? It's also a girl. They had a very close bond until she decided to date a Hindu. Lisa's father was like, you cannot marry him. He's a Hindu. And she's like, but I love him. Right. And she married him. And as far as I understood it, like he just completely stopped talking to her after that. Wow. Lisa's father stopped talking to Lisa's cousin ever since she married a Hindu guy. And, I, and that was when I first learned of just that extreme conflict between Muslims and, and Hindus. Like I had no idea how like just that kind of friction that existed when, when you try to have that crossover. There's some kind of deeper meaning symbolism here that I haven't quite figured out a way to articulate. The fact that this n crazy storm, this crazy flood is happening in this religious holy place. Yeah, and the thing is, it's a real life event. This actually happened. Like, I'm not saying the love story actually happened. And you're not saying that the prayer of this girl actually informed the flood that happened. No, no. I mean, who knows, right? But the fact is they're setting this love story in the midst of a natural disaster, which happened fairly recently in India. Right, I remember, we talked yeah. about this last time during the teaser trailer. Yeah. And I, I remember appreciating the teaser trailer. There's a nice... This is gonna kind of go into another direction, but I just wanna say before I forget that there's a nice mixture of visual effects and practical effects here. Yeah. From what I can tell, it looks like they merged the two to achieve a, as realistic looking flood as possible here. And I mean, it's terrifying. I was getting goosebumps up and down my entire body as I was watching that flood yeah. like come towards me on the screen because they've really managed to give the storm and the flood a personality. Yeah. Like it looks angry, like you said. Like, yeah. and it's, it's so scary because like the power of nature is immense. Right now in California, we're battling these forest fires and like when natural disasters happen, you almost, you, you feel helpless. Like what can you, well, what can it, you do? I mean, it's man versus God, right? Exactly. That's the, that's the story. Yeah. It's, and so it, it feel, you feel this kind of nature's rage, nature at its worst. Yeah. Try, and it feels like nature's trying to kill you. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. a, a fire can erupt like that, and then in two minutes, just everything's decimated. It's gone. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then same with the flood. It's like one yeah. minute they're saying, oh, evacuate now. Two minutes later, it's like too late. Yeah. You know, it's it's scary. If y'all want to see some flood action and you can't wait, you want some kind of just little taste before you watch Keternoth, go pick up Noah. The movie by... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're plugging Aronofsky. Yeah, go watch Aronofsky's Noah. I mean, that's, I like that movie too. <laughs> and movie. that movie's littered with symbolism. Uh, it's a very different film, but uh, there is some forbidden love that happens in that film as well. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I, I like that. And I, I, I'm very excited to see this. I'm totally going to check this out. Yeah. I like this actor as well. It's Sushant Singh Rushboot. Yeah, yeah, I think he's good. Didn't he play uh, Emma Stoney? Emma Stoney. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought that's what he Yeah, and then Sarah Ali Khan. Like, obviously, she comes from an acting pedigree. That's very strong, like her dad's Saif Ali Khan, right? So, right. I mean, I don't know how much acting she studied. How much? Yeah, how much acting did she, she study? She seems but to be. She seems to be doing a good job of playing that hard to get kind of gal. Her rage is coming through big time. Yeah, I, I, I bought it. Yeah, I'm, I would be curious to see, you know, how she carries this movie since it's her first, like. I would imagine there's Major a lot of foray. pent up rage, uh, you know, directed at her dad that she's using because she's for years she's been saying, put me in a movie. And he's like, not yet, not yet, not yet. And still finally he's like, okay, now. And so <laughs> she's like, you're just summoning all that rage of not being allowed to be in a movie yet. And yeah. now she can finally exercise all Stop of that. Stop sheltering me, dad. Yeah. I just want to kiss Sushant Singh Rajput. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> 
if I was Saif Ali Khan, I'd be like, ah, this is why I held off for so long. <laughs> I'm making a lot of assumptions just in jest. These are just jokes. Yeah, they're jokes, guys. They're, they're not serious. They're not to be taken seriously. So don't hashtag rage me, please. I'm just having fun. Saif Ali Khan, I'm a fan. <laughs> we love you. Yeah, no, 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 no quarrels here. I'll watch Go Go Gone for you many, many more times. Yes. If, if that helps. There were some pretty epic landscape shots. Um, the green screen effects being used throughout when there's no flood happening. Yeah. There's some green screen stuff happening and that was the only visual effects that I questioned. It, right. it just, it, it had a sense of artificiality to it. Yeah. That I could, I could kind of see it was like a little bit of artifacting on the, I don't know what it was. I don't know how you can tell, but you can tell, right? Yeah, but, it's, just, it's like an uncanny valley effect. Yes. Yeah. And. That's all gone when the flood happens. I'm not sure like they that's it seems to me that's where they put all of their money. Yeah. They're like, okay, we'll just make this kind of work, but the flood is what people are here for. Well that's money well well spent, right? Wheel spent. Wheel yeah. spent. Yeah. I got so excited I can't even talk. Right. You got so excited you became an American southerner. Wheel spent. Howdy folks. Yeah. I got a snake that's in my a boot. That's a crazy <laughs> flood there they got going on. Yeah. <laughs> on the big screen, it's gonna be scary. Yeah. Really scary. I guess my one hope is that there isn't any backlash because it's so close to the actual event that took place. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that people are able to still appreciate this and hopefully w what it does best is it, it sheds light on this event. I mean, it certainly does for me because I wouldn't have known about it if not for this film. Not that the American audience is the target audience. Right. But it's still like, I know about this now and I'm sure that there's gonna be some information, you know, illustrated here that I would not have learned about otherwise. Yeah, I would hope so. And, you know, I don't know what angle they're gonna take on this because I don't know that much information about what went on, like how much how much help was given, how much warning was given. I don't know if it's gonna be like some sort of commentary about the government yeah. or if it's gonna be singing the praises of people who were involved with the rescue efforts and whatnot. So I guess all we can do is just wait and see. The one thing I will say that I like about this is, although we've seen this kind of love story before, in, in just in terms of the personal dynamics between the guy and the girl, mm -hmm. like we've seen that before, yeah. but we haven't seen it in this kind of setting before in a natural disaster kind of thing. Like if you look at Titanic, Jack mm -hmm. pursued Rose. If you look at Avatar, blue guy pursued blue girl, right? I mean, it, generally speaking, whenever you see films like this, it's usually the guy pursuing the girl. Right. And even if it's a love triangle, the guys are pursuing the girl. Here, it's like the guy's just kinda, he's just trying to do a good job. He's just doing his thing and, and he's shy. He looks like the guy who's not sure how to initiate the conversation with the girl, but he's just trying to, you know, be good. Right. I, I would, and, and she's, it looks like she's more of the initiator based on what the trailer's showing us. Well, yeah, she's, she definitely seems like a fiery She's person. also the aggressor. <laughs> she's yeah. like, I will pray that all of this comes crashing down if I can't have my way. Yeah. Um, How bad would you feel though? Have you ever like... Nope. I wouldn't feel bad. No? No. I, like how, have you ever imagined like, you know, when you get really mad at someone, like you watch a movie or something and a, and a kid goes, oh, I'm so mad, I hate you, I wish you would die. And okay. The next day you're- I have a fun story for you guys if you're still here. This is an anecdote. Uh, I have an ex-girlfriend who used to believe in multiple gods. You, oh, I've told you this before, yes, yeah? Have, yeah? Yeah, And I'm not gonna say her name. What happened was she was apart from her boyfriend for about a year and her boyfriend had a new girlfriend and my ex-girlfriend prayed to her gods for her ex-boyfriend's girlfriend to die, literally. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened was her ex-boyfriend's girlfriend shows up at you know their house one evening, drunk, her ex-boyfriend's asleep in bed, doesn't hear his girlfriend knocking. Because she forgot her keys. She forgot her keys. Somehow she gets over to the side of the building and shimmies on the balcony to try to get in through the balcony, mm -hmm. slips and dies, falls to her death, right? And my ex-girlfriend believed that her prayer is what killed her and she felt bad about it for a while. And when she told me that, I'm like, you had nothing to do with that, but you go ahead and believe that if you want. It's just a big, big coincidence. Now, obviously the properties of this film are different. There's a magical element in there that, that the filmmaker wants you to buy into. It's up to you as the audience to decide if the Correlation is the causation. I mean, I'd feel pretty bad. 
if that happened, even if I'd said it in passing and then something awful like that happened, I'd be like, wow. Would you, would you guys feel bad? Has anything like that ever happened to you? I mean, I'd love to hear your stories in the comments below. Yeah. And I'd love to read them if you are verbose in your comments. So Louis C.K. has a joke. Did you hear about, did you hear this joke? I, I told you this. Okay, so it's a stand-up joke and I don't know if it's true or not, but some friend of his called him while his friend was on a plane. Uh -huh. And Louis C.K. was irritated because he didn't want to talk to him. And he goes, I hope your plane crashes. And the guy goes, you take that back. That's mean. What if I, what yeah. if my plane crashes and I die? How would you feel? Wouldn't you feel bad? He goes, no, I would be amazed because then I have the power to crash planes. How amazing is that? <laughs> Making fun of the fact that obviously he has no control over, you know. In Friends, there was a thing where Ross goes, I just want to be married again. And then Rachel comes through the door in the wedding dress and Chandler looks at the, at the door and goes, I, I just want a million dollars. Nothing. That's a very, it's that. a very, yeah. very, very early season episode. Yeah. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And if you are still here right now, hashtag I love Chandler in the comments. Put that at the top of whatever you decide to comment.